Back in the mid to late 90s, I was pretty much checked out on a lot of the new releases from metal bands. Uh, the new bands I wasn't really into, and even the bands of the past seemed musically lost. But I'm older now, so I'm thinking I'd like to revisit some of those older albums. Like this one. The question, of course, is, do I still hate it? Well, we're going to find out. So my personal history with this album is pretty brief. I saw the music video for Stain of Mind, and it wasn't really taken with the track. I heard a few of the other songs, and I really didn't like much of what I heard. I think I was reacting to their flirtation with some of the modern musical stuff they were doing, some of the trends that were going on at the time in the late 90s. Um, so I was probably reacting to that as well. I should also point out that like a lot of the shows I do, I am doing the vinyl version of this album. So if you're used to the CD or digital download of it, it might have extra tracks, it might have a slightly different track order. I'm reacting to this, so just keep that in mind. So be right back with the track by track. So right away, track one is a really good opener. It's a solid track. It makes you think, hey, this is going to be an amazing Slayer album. Uh, classic Hanneman King guitar solo trade-offs. You're, you're, ah, it's going to be great. Uh, I didn't like the vocal effects going on in this track, um, and it continues through the album here and there. It's kind of obnoxious, but it doesn't pull away from how good this song actually is. So I hear this song. I'm pretty hopeful, but you know, we'll see what happens later on, of course. Track 2 is also a bit of a banger, though not as strong as that first song. Still pretty good, and again gives you some hope that this is going to be a fantastic Slayer album. I definitely dig it. Um, the bass can be heard, which is nice. You know, there's been in the past, Tom's bass playing hasn't always been heard, but I like it. You get it in this album, so it's one of the benefits. So track three, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, it's kind of a groove metal track. I mean, we know groove metal has pretty much taken off and infiltrated a lot of genres, but it's definitely here. It's the 90s. We come to expect it. Uh, the guitars sound like ass, which leads me to the production on this record. Not good. Not really great at all. Uh, thank you, Rick Rubin, I guess, again. Also, Tom's whisper thing he does in this track is not very interesting. I, I know it's an experimental album. We can get to a little bit more of that later, but... Yeah, it's crazy. The song itself isn't awful, but it's a real sharp dip from the quality of the previous two tracks, for sure. So in track four, it's clear they're trying to bring some of that sludgy 90s guitar sound in. Think some of the more metal-influenced grunge bands. That's definitely going on here. Also, another vocal effect I'm not crazy about. This time, some warbly underwater sound. I really think we should have just left Tom's vocals alone, because the thing that's on this album, the thing he's doing on this, this song in particular, it's just not working. Drums on this track are also less than remarkable. And we've got Bo Staff instead of Lombardo, so there's that. Is that a bias? I don't know. But you can definitely hear the lack of Dave on this album. I mean, he's just not here. And would he have helped these tracks? I don't know. It's hard to say. So it's an okay track, but really just nothing special. So track five picks things up a bit from the previous two tracks. Uh, the drums, as well as the guitar soloing, are really picked up quite a bit. Um, there's some good energy going on. It's not a particularly great song. It's serviceable. And it also doesn't seem to have much of an identity to itself. It's all over the place. It's not really sure of itself in a lot of ways, which I think is kind of the leitmotif for the late 90s and these classic bands. I mean, where are they, you know? Anyways, uh, decent, but again... Not grabbing me as much as it should. So track six is obviously where this album hits the toilet. Uh, they're experimenting with rap metal in the verses, which doesn't work for them at all and is ugh, awful. I think even some of the thrashier choruses and the guitar soloing, which is pretty competent, just don't save this track at all. It's clear pandering to the 90s. It's not Slayer. It's awful. Flipping over to side two, we've got track seven, a uh, very mellow intro, unexpectedly so, I would say. Uh, Tom's equally mellow vocals in the verses. I don't know what to put to those. It sounds like bad Danzig. And I'm thinking of Danzig 4. I'm thinking about the track Sadistical. First of all, great title. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. You know what? Just sing like Tom for crying out loud. That works. Funny thing is you almost forget some of these are Slayer songs. You know, there's so much experimentation going on that you forget. And then the solo pops up and that classic Hanneman King soloing happens. You're like, oh, Slayer, you know. So that happens sometimes when you're hearing these tracks. Yeah. The thing is, solos aren't enough for a song. You need an actual song, a good song, a Slayer song. So, you know, 
Maybe I need a little bit more of that on this record. Yeah, this one's fairly lackluster. So track eight picks things up again. Uh, this sounds a bit of a roller coaster, to be honest. Huh? You know, a couple good songs, a couple of songs, a couple of good songs, and so on. This follows that pattern. It's a slower track, and there are a few other slow tracks on this album. I think this one's a bit more competent in that regard. So I'm good with it to an extent. It's an okay track. Again, the track suffers from crap production. Also, Tom's got another vocal effect, and it's, this one sounds more like a megaphone, which is totally unnecessary. I don't know what we're doing playing with sound effects with the vocals every other track. It's unnecessary. We know what a Slayer album sounds like. We know what a good Slayer album sounds like. We know what Tom sounds like when he's at the top of his game. You don't need to hide it behind all these dumb effects. So there's that. It's a good track, but just not great. And now we're at track nine, which is effing great. A great song. A real Slayer song, finally. Unfortunately, it's also the shortest song on the album at two minutes and 16 seconds. But we're getting into some better territory here. I'm getting a little more excited about this album. Moving on to track 10, another great Slayer song. Finally, we're getting some good ones here. Um, uh, crap production aside, of course, uh, the choruses are pretty strong, pretty great. Um, the bridge is questionable, another stupid vocal effects there. Thankfully, that bridge is very short, and I don't think it, the song takes much of a hit as a result. I think it's still a great song, regardless of that. Moving on to track 11, not a lot to say about this song other than it's probably the greatest song on this album. It's really, really good. More songs in this album should have been this good. Um, I also feel like it's strong enough that it could have been on a great album like Seasons in the Abyss. I think it's really a great song. I don't know what more to say about it. Um, I'm just happy to hear a great song. And finally, track 12. Um, I don't really like the opening riff to it at all, but the song is okay, I guess. Um, the song itself is odd because it's a bonus track of sorts. Um, it's not on the official album. Uh, this album typically ends with a song I just talked about, which is called Point, and that song is an incredible album closer. Um, I think they just threw this on here just to have it on here, this, this song. Um, it's not listed on the disc label for some reason, but it just sort of pops up. I don't know. I mean, if you need it, it's there, but... I just don't think it's that amazing of a song. It's not great, it's not bad, it's just sort of there. So here are the point totals for the album, track by track. We're at 63%. Not too bad, not great, but not awful. Kind of in the middle. So not including the bonus track, it seems like this album is bookended by great songs. We got two good songs at the beginning and three great songs at the end. And then in the middle, we just have okay songs and crap songs. So it starts strong, it ends strong, but it's that middle that I have a bit of an issue with. This is definitely Slayer experimenting a bit. It is the late 90s. A lot of bands didn't know what the hell to do at that time period, you know? So there's going to be some of that. Jeff Hanneman wrote the lion's share of the music, which is interesting. I do cut him a bit of slack here, I think because of that. And things could have been a lot worse. I mean, if you think about what the other three bands in the Big Four were doing at this time and a little after, kind of get my point. Of course, to Slayer's credit, they did have a lot of more or less consistent albums out in their discography, uh, especially looking back. Um, cover Tunes album aside, depending on how you feel about that Cover Tunes album. But this album in particular does kind of stick out. So I don't hate this album anymore. I think some of the stronger tracks hold it up quite a bit. But I just don't love it either. So there you go. And that's my revisit of Diabolus in Musica by Slayer. That's Latin, you know. You know, Latin. That's evil, I guess. But how do you feel about the album? And if you hate it, would you want to revisit it all these years later? Let me know that and anything else that makes sense in the comments below. Of course, at this point in the video, I'm going to tell you, like, subscribe, and share. I'm actually going to ask you to do that. I wouldn't tell you to do it. But if you do it, it definitely helps out the Accusation Network in a lot of ways. That's the channel you're watching right now. I do metal vinyl collecting videos once or twice a week. I think you'd be interested in that. If you're watching this, of course you are. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.